waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. Globalists are going to find out when they finally engage the American people. The bullet's going to hit the bone. You're going to take all of our strength as weakness, our kindness for weakness. <laughs> we were just trying to give you a fair shot before we tear your arms out of your sockets politically. The real predator doesn't attack its own species. It has a governor. And you little pissant globalists don't have one of those. But history always offers up dumbasses that think they can set up their tyrannies. And when hundreds of millions of people are gone and dead, you'll be part of the ash heap of history. Now that's down one possible route. I hope we don't go that way. But I'm committed. I know you are beaten. I'll tell you what's scary, though. They've been really arrogant up until now, and that's why we've been really having an effect. They just now figured they put their arm in a wood chipper. They just now aren't being as arrogant. So we, 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 we they got some smart people. We're going to have some stuff to deal with. Don't, don't make any mistake, but they're done. We've already got big blows in. We've already stabbed them a couple times. They may get us. We got children. The globalists don't have cultural children, spiritual children. They don't have progeny. They're not into life. They've got one life. That's why they don't want to lay it down. They want other people to lay it down. No, you're going to have to lay your life down for this. And so are we. But you see, escape is not our plan. You finally figured that out, didn't you? When you threatened us. Oh, oh, you threatened us. Oh, my God, don't come get us. We don't want to make it easy for you, but we'll do anything to stand against you. Metaphysically, though, you're going to have to give ounce for ounce, pint for pint, gallon for gallon, as much blood as we do. And we're ready to give the blood, just like we've given the energy and the time and the focus. Look how weak you are. Look how lazy you are. Look at you. Look at what you are. That's why you're preparing this hell for all of us. Because you're preparing your own kingdom that you will inherit, not us. John in Mexico. A lot of calls from Mexico. I should have thought of that. We should get calls from Mexico tomorrow. Uh, a lot of Mexican listeners, well, they had the flu down there and all that. Phones were loaded, great intel. Uh, go ahead, John in Mexico. What's your view on all this? Hello. Hi, Alex. Thank you for everything you and your team do exposing corruption. Um, my question is, how could a country like Mexico, which is a crown jewel in the New World Order, free itself from globalist control? You're, you're talking about a country that is already run by the international megabanks, where there is no Second Amendment, and where uh, the ex-minister of finance of Carlos Salinas is currently the head of the OECD. I, 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 absolutely. Mexico, look, here's the deal. Mexico has more oil and more resources than the entire United States, one of the richest areas in the world other than some areas of Africa. Africa's per capita, per square inch, is has more than anybody else, but, of course, they're the poorest. It's just like it's metaphysical. Uh, and then the crazy, evil Middle East gets all the money. I mean, it's just, it's really twisted. But stay there. I'm going to come right back to you because you mentioned this. Exactly. Mexico heads up the OECD that runs the whole deal. And it's because Mexico has more billionaires per capita than the other country in the world because it's got its people enslaved. And Mexico was starting to struggle out of that 10 years ago, so they started the big drug war down there. Uh, so the globalists target countries that have the potential for strength. People can make jokes and say, Mexico, potential for strength? Absolutely it does. It has nationalism, and they're not cowards. We'll be back. I want to get a brief preview of what uh, David Knight, chomping a bit to take over, has got to cover. Then I hit a few more calls. But... Everybody knows 10 years ago, they'd say, this show's depressing. You're talking about how we're way behind. All this horrible stuff's happening. I was telling people the truth about what was happening so we'd take action, not to demoralize you. Now we're having victories. And, and it doesn't mean the tide won't turn again, but this is the type of war gaming and real-life action that changes the world. And I'm not saying this to be cliched or to be uh, virtue signaling when somebody calls in from Mexico. But I'll tell you, it is a paradox that I talk to people from Mexico. And when we take calls from Mexico, they're probably on average the most informed people that I talk to. And then look at how Mexico's a hellhole. 
Well, that's what you get when you're next door to the New World Order. The U.S. has been captured. Mexico has this colonial history, but it's also got people that will fight. Mexico, for a long time, wouldn't let multinationals take it over until the 80s. That's now happened. And so it's just all part of the same exploitation. They don't want to merge us with Mexico to empower Mexico or merge us with Canada. They want to merge us to create a new political system where we're all enslaved. And so the caller brings up how Mexico is heavily involved in global government. But I'd say it's really weird, actually. Per capita, Mexico, when it gets to the New World Order, for its population of only 150 million, 130 million, is one of the most powerful groups in the New World Order. And I've tried to figure it out. I guess it's the money laundering, the drugs, the, the system they've got of feudalism. I, I don't know. Let me ask the caller, and then I'll go to... I'll go to... Uh, David Knight, you guys are typing something on screen, too. It says Mexico independence, or what are you saying? Oh, yes, it says September uh, 16th, yeah. Uh, John, I mean, you really brought up a lot of points the average caller would know that I was mentioning the world government body earlier that nobody even knows the name of. You are pointing out Mexico's at the heart of that. Uh, so what do you think's going on? What do you think's happening? Well, I'm, I'm a trained attorney, and those of us who have time to worry about Mexico becoming a full-fledged colony again are few. Uh, Mexico usually ranks between the 13th and 15th economy in the world, but now has more billionaires than a few Western European countries. And little of this has worked for the interest of the vast majority of the Mexican people, uh, most of whom do not realize that they are slowly being turned into slaves of a group they have no role in. That's right. Let's be, let's be clear. Morning. The Mexican people are uh, per capita. Mexico for your population has more billionaires than anybody else. So what does that say? Judge Street Bites for you. Mexico is incredible. It has produced more wealth per capita than any place but South Africa. So, again, it's a paradox. What's going on? Well, I think that I think you just uh, touched the nail on the head. I think it's the result of abuse and concentration of power. And also, there's a couple of things that I'd like to point out. There's uh, education is, is incredibly poor, and the control of the media has been going on for generations. Just this morning, I made a post on a mainstream newspaper, and it was deleted uh, within maybe 30 minutes. Um, and it was pro-Trump, and it was anti-globalist, and this is the third time this has happened to me just this week in mainstream media in Mexico. Uh, a few minutes more, sir. I mean, it's, it's, it's great to have you call in and so break sadly, this down. Yes, well, I guess, sadly, we're not surprised, for example, by the New York Times unfair releases or Carlos Slim's influence thereof, nor sadly even by rigged elections or embezzlement of foundation monies. This has gone on, gone on for so long here, and it, there is such a distance between the powerful and the unpowerful here in Mexico, that it really is a um, uphill battle against globalism. So that's why I wanted to pose that question to you. So is that I, it? I mean, I mean, give me your question, but Mexico, that's what I was thinking earlier, is the model of modern neo-feudalism. Is that it? Like the Mexican uh, neo-colonialists working for the New York banks, they have been the most successful at squeezing the most out of their people. I would definitely agree with that. However, I think a silent majority would agree with the Brexiters and with the nationalists. And I think... Uh, I want Mexico to be powerful. I want it to be wealthy. I want to have a great neighbor. Instead, it's just, it's, just, it's just crazy how it's kept in poverty. Well, I think part of the solution might be in James Pinkerton's article today in Breitbart, uh, which is titled Globalism Hits a Brick Wall. Uh, now, what will Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton do? Uh, and I'll quote, the goal isn't socialism or anything like that. Instead, the goal is the widespread distribution of private property facilitated by conscious national economic development. Can you um, imagine if they gave real free market to Mexico or Venezuela or anywhere? I mean, Venezuela was rich before they brought in socialism. They threw that out the door. Can you imagine if you gave real private property to Mexico, how, how wealthy that place would be in 20 years? A lot of people joke here that Mexico is uh, very close to God, very uh, close, too close to the U.S., but very far from God. Damn right. All right. Good to hear from you. Great points. We need people like that guy to like file videos and, and speak out because that is so true. And it's sick. I mean, the, the wealth is unlimited, people, but you can't have kingpins, El Jefe's running it. And look, the, the elite want to sew it up. They don't want you to have access to free market. Because they can't compete with it. David and I, we got a load of phone lines here. If you want to take them, that's great. I apologize if I don't get to them. I've got to go to a business meeting right now. I've got to leave right now. 
Uh, but epic things happening. I mean, I heard, you, obviously you heard the show today where I talked about what we've known for a while, but it's really true. InfoWars is at the heart of the resistance. And, and we need to say that because we need your prayers and support. We're under sickening behind the scenes attack. And I told people it's beyond a movie. I mean, it's been, God's taken me through it. It's been very painful. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've made it through it. Uh, and it's just another waves are coming. But it, it's it's still, I cannot believe the effect we're having. It is, it is biblical, David Nine. I'm going to turn it over to you and leave right now. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, Alex, and of course, we uh, continually see you being called out uh, increasingly uh, by people even up to the level of Hillary Clinton. Uh, they have ignored you for a while. You kind of, uh, you know, were, were very effective, but they didn't, as you pointed out earlier in the show, they would just refer to you as that guy in Texas, or they would uh, say the uh, dark corners of the Internet or the vast right-wing conspiracy. Now they're calling you out by name. But you're talking about what was happening in Mexico and the kind of colonialism that we're seeing there. We're going to talk about what's happening here in America and the kind of colonialism of the connected and the billionaires, the kind of crony capitalism that we've seen operating throughout the third world, uh, throughout uh, Central and South America, throughout the Muslim world, throughout everywhere, essentially, except America. Now it is coming here. If you want to get successful in America... What you do is you get political patrons like the Clintons. And, of course, this all came home to roost yesterday, uh, this report that was up on the Drudge Report um, from Breitbart showing Bill Clinton saying he's going to rebuild Detroit using Syrian refugees. And when I looked at that picture, uh, I looked at this guy on the right who kind of looked like... Uh, it looked like a profile of Groucho Marx from this particular picture. The guy doesn't look like it that much in other pictures. Talking to Clinton at the Clinton Global Initiative. And he was somebody that I didn't know. And I thought, who is this guy that is pushing so hard for refugee resettlement here in the United States? And why is he pushing that hard? There you can see the picture of him right there. Uh, why is he pushing that hard? And as I started looking at it, I realized this is a story of unbelievable takeover of our country. It's not just... Refugees coming in and taking uh, blue class factory jobs or middle class jobs with H-1B visas. No, they're coming in and they're taking over our entrepreneurship. They're taking over American businesses. They're taking that role and shutting us down using their connections in Washington. This guy's company, Chobani Yogurt, is a good example of this. And when you look at the small town, Twin Falls, Idaho, which, as you may not have connected the dots was the place that we heard of back in June where you had that five-year-old girl who was raped by a group of juvenile uh, refugees in that city. It was covered up by the media. It was covered up by the local government. And you say, why were they doing that? Eventually, the truth did come out. And yet, the reason for that is because you've got this guy coming in and putting in the world's largest yogurt factory in a very small town. And you've got massive applications of money going in to buy up the media there. Now, we're going to talk at the bottom of the hour to Lee Stranahan, who's been doing a series of investigative reports in Twin Falls, Idaho. He's going to give us eyewitness reports about what's been going on there. Of course, there's been a, a series of reports that have been ongoing. But one of the things that you have to understand, we talked about this on the nightly news last night in a uh, YouTube video that's up on Alex's uh, channel, Revealed. Foreign Fed member behind refugee push. This guy, who remains a Turkish citizen, actually sits on the board of the New York Fed. And, of course, the New York Fed is the preeminent uh, Federal Reserve Bank organization. There's 12 of them throughout the country. But they're the ones who have the preeminent position, the first among equals. They're the ones who make the calls. This guy, who started out with a massive influx of money from the Small Business Association, $800,000. Hey, you know what? <laughs> my, I started a business with my wife. My father and both of my grandfathers had businesses. They never got a cent, never a cent from the federal government to start their businesses or to expand their businesses. Politically, pe politically connected people like this foreign billionaire, Hamdi Yulukaya, are able to come in and get nearly a million dollars to start their business. And then what did he do? He went out and he bought both New York senators and a large lobbying firm in Washington to get himself into the Michelle Obama school lunch program, where after a couple of years of liberally applied Greece in the form of currency, he was able to get the school lunch program to say, hey, we're going to get rid of meat and we're just going to start substituting his yogurt in the school lunch program. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice?
And so we're going to take a look at, at what's happening there. But before we go to that, uh, he's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. When I look at this situation here of Homeland Security saying they're going to take over the elections, I knew when I saw this being put out there, hey, we got a couple of election boards that have been hacked, but don't worry, nothing has really happened. I told my wife when I saw that, I said, this is a false flag that is being set up. You know, we've had, uh, of course, they can hack it. They've hacked all the federal employee personnel records. They've, they've hacked the Federal Reserve notes, uh, meeting notes, and they have actually hacked the NSA, stealing the NSA's hacking software and selling it on the Internet. So, of course, they could hack anything they want. But the simple solution to this is to simply have paper ballots and people observing the election. That's the solution. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. Of course, this is August... 31st, this is the uh, day 271 since Hillary Clinton has had a press conference. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has had 16 press conferences. He's had about uh, two uh, press conferences a month. Uh, Hillary Clinton hasn't had one since last December before the first primary votes were held. Think about that. Think about the private, quiet, closed fundraisers that she has where the tickets are anywhere from $33,000 to $100,000 per person. You know, she speaks to small groups. You know, Nigel Farage said he's used to going at the grassroots level, going around to small, cold rooms where he's talking to 50 people at a time. You know, quite frankly, you see that all the time. Back in, back in North Carolina, when I was involved in politics, even the big-name national politicians that would come through would speak to very, very small rooms. It's very unusual to see more than uh, just a few dozen people in a room, even when a big-name politician with national status comes through, Donald Trump is speaking to football stadiums. Now, Hillary Clinton is speaking to small rooms, but small rooms so the people have a great deal of cash to give her. In the next segment, we're going to be talking to Breitbart reporter Lee Stranahan, and he's going to be talking about how this crony capitalism is manifesting itself in a very troubling way in Twin Falls, Idaho, the largest yogurt factory in the world. How did he get there? How did he build his business? It's a tale of crony capitalism. It's a tale of being connected to the Clintons. And so we're going to be talking to him in the next segment. Before we get back to the news, and I want to talk about what's happening in Brazil, because I think it truly is a harbinger of what we may be looking at here in this country. I want to point out to you that we've got a couple of specials. We've got 20% off vitamin mineral fusion drink. That's at InfoWarsLife.com. While supplies last, a very easy and tasteful way to get your supply of vitamins and minerals. It's much easier than taking a slew of pills. Tastes great, and you can get one month's supply out of that little container. Again, that's 20% off. Also, get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt at cost. You know, when Hillary called out Alex Jones and said he had a black heart, he said, okay, I'm going to run a black heart special. Hillary for Prison, <laughs> InfoWarsStore.com. We're just going to double down, folks, because the truth is on our side. Just nine ninety five to support the operation and take a stand against Hillary Clinton to tell people that you know she is a corrupt criminal. And finally, our initial run of BioTruth Selenium is beginning to run low at InfoWarsLife.com. Take a look at that essential nutrient and the form that it's in. It's 100% organic. It's pressed from organic mustard seed. Very important uh, source of uh, a, an essential uh, nutrient that you need in your life, in your family's life. That is BioTrue Selenium. It is our initial entry, and it is beginning to run low. Now, what we have just learned is that the Brazilian president has just been ousted in an impeachment vote. This is on the Drudge Report. Washington Post says Brazil's Senate ousted Dilma Rousseff as president today, voting overwhelmingly to impeach her. The culmination of a protracted process, it was not even close. It was 61 to 20 to impeach her. And the reason I think this is very important for us is because I reported on this back when there was the GOP primary in Utah. The GOP in Utah paid $80,000 to bring in a voting machine company called Smartmatic. They are the biggest voting machine, electronic voting machine company in the world. And guess where this started, okay? And who started it? Smartmatic began in Venezuela with close ties to Hugo Chavez. Many people believe that they're responsible for his lock on the elections there, but there have been reports of corruption and rigged elections throughout Central and South America, including the Philippines and including Brazil. We looked at the Philippines uh, and other places. In some cases, 25% of the votes were lost without any uh, without any 
uh, record to be able to backtrack that. So when we look at the fact that Homeland Security is saying, well, the electronic machines are hackable, of course they are. Everything is hackable. There's not any, even the NSA, as I pointed out, their hacking software was hacked. <laughs> How's that for recursive programming? <laughs> their, their hacking software was hacked and put on the internet for sale in their face. They've hacked the minutes of the Federal Reserve, as we pointed out. That is incredible insider information that can be exploited financially. So, of course, everything is hackable, but there is a very, very simple solution. And the U.S. government knows it. They did it when they had elections in Iraq. They would validate people. They would come in. They would have all the election on one day. You'd get your, paint, your thumb painted purple so you couldn't vote a second time. You don't extend this out forever. North Carolina is one of the worst cases. The voting is going to start in just a few days in North Carolina. And we have the law in North Carolina. They have the longest voting period of anybody. And as I've said many times, my brother-in-law knows someone who went to the polling place because they don't require any photo ID. They said, you've already voted. And so has this other person at your address who was his dead mother. What we're going to have if we don't go back to honest, simple elections with paper ballots and human monitors is fraud. That's how we're she got in. March. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and joining me in this segment is going to be Breitbart Journalist. He's actually the lead investigative reporter at Breitbart News. He's the founder of CitizenJournalistSchool.com, Lee Stranahan. And he's had a series of articles about what's going on in Twin Falls, Idaho. You say, well, why Twin Falls, Idaho? It's a very small town. It's got less than 50,000 people. Going back to August 10th, he had this uh, story, Twin Falls Refugee Rape special report. Why are the refugees moving in in the first place? He said, two recent sexual assaults by Muslims in this community of about 50,000 people have made national headlines and raised a wider question. Why are the refugees in Twin Falls there in the first place? Well, the answer to that is Chobani Yogurt, the world's largest yogurt factory and the man behind it. And his story is an amazing story of how you can Get ahead in the world today if you are a friend of the Clintons, if you uh, buy influence with them. But, you know, as, as we look at this, and again, there was a lot of pushback when this story was originally reported of the first rape of the little girl, five-year-old girl who was raped by uh, three other juveniles reportedly. And there was a lot of pushback. There was pushback in the mainstream media. There was pushback in the local media. There was pushback in the local government. We've got Slate calling the Drudge Report and InfoWars out. They said the Drudge Report trumpeted the InfoWars story with headlines, Syrian refugees rape little girl at knife point in Idaho. They say, oh, this is just a bunch of unsubstantiated rumors. I had the mayor there attack the family on Facebook. Well, the truth will eventually come out. And one of the people who has been at the very epicenter of this, again, is lead investigative reporter for Breitbart News, Lee Stranahan. He's joining us on the line right now. Thank you for joining us, Lee. Yeah, David, thanks very much for having me. Give us an idea of why, you asked the question, why are the refugees and Twin Falls there in the first place? And you answer that in your story. Tell us why they're there in the first place. Well, the short answer is cheap labor and local oligarchy. Let's, let's be clear on what's going on here. Yes. And, and. Also, let's be clear that what's going on in Twin Falls is not unique to Twin Falls. This is really what's going on across the country and, and around the world, uh, but it's going on across the country in the United States. What's interesting about Twin Falls is that I think it provides a real microcosm of the problem. This provides a real microcosm of the problem with globalism yes. and the impact that it has in areas from law and order to public health to jobs and wages, right, um, across the country. And so I've been embedded up here in Twin Falls for about a month now. I'm going to be up here another couple of weeks. And, um, and really because I think it hits on so many important issues. And often when we talk about these things on a national or international level, I think it's uh, in a sense too abstract for people. I mean, you, you can get it, right? Yeah. But when you see it at a ground level, the way things are, are working, in a, in a town that is, you know, like you say, about 50,000 people, um, it, it, it really comes into very, very sharp focus what we're up against here with this combination of big institutions, business, government, um, media, and even religion, um, working on a local level 
the same thing that we're seeing on a global level. So that's, that's one of the things that's interesting. And they have a great activist community up here. One of the things about Twin Falls is they're actually doing something about it. People like my friend Julie DeWolf is up here. Uh, that, that there's a group up here called We the People that have been really at the forefront and keeping this story alive. The, the sexual assault, the rape happened back on June 2nd. Yes. And was buried. And I didn't even gain, you know, I was covering the political conventions and, uh, so I didn't get to it till the beginning of August, and other people were doing a great job. The activist up here, but you know, you know, a number of other writers, you guys uh, were on it, and um, the you know the thing I've been uh, really uh, blessed to be able to do is to spend the time to do a deep dive in it and really start to look into the issues. And boy, I'll tell you, one thing that's very clear is the citizens of Twin Falls, the regular people, not the activists. Just people living their lives, they realize that they're being starved for information. They realize that the local media is the fix is in with that local media. So and let's talk about that. that that's yeah. a massive influx of capital from Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. Yep. Eleven million dollars into this tiny town in order to buy the media, essentially. So I think it's one of the reasons, I, I, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist, of course, but, you know, when you have that kind of uh, influence there, you can suppress these stories. And they did that with the rape of that little five-year-old girl. And then, as you pointed out in your series of stories, because we've had the second rape happen in August, and that was the rape uh, by a refugee who had been profiled as one of yeah. the shining examples of upstanding citizens that are being brought in. And he was profiled by this very same media and then he turns around and allegedly rapes a 33 year old uh, mentally retarded lady yeah he, he molested her he molested her mm -hmm. he didn't he was planning to rape her he said. okay okay but, but yeah she fled and so and, that's an interesting part of the story but i think it's also as we look at this other story what, what surfaced uh, yesterday with breitbart in detroit You've got Bill Clinton with the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative, and this guy who owns the yogurt factory there, that massive presence there, $450 million to start it, the world's largest yogurt factory. He's now expanding it with another $100 million, so this thing continues to grow. And he's bragging about how he's got 30% of his employees there are refugees. They speak 11 different languages. I told my wife, I said, you know, he says, I've got translators for these 11 different languages there 24 7 and i said it would be a lot cheaper wouldn't it just to teach them english but he wants these people to be captive to him doesn't he that's by right. keeping them to hire americans that's another wacky idea that i'd have yeah. but um, <laughs> maybe i don't know maybe maybe like the veterans i've interviewed who applied and couldn't get a job there oh um, wow yeah and if you think let's think about that irony for just one second we, we have these uh, global interests who start wars uh, like the war in Iraq, let's say. Let's use that as an example, okay? Mm -hmm. A war that was supported by both Bush and Clinton. Not to be a conspiracy theorist, but that's just a fact, right? That's right. Um, then they, the war creates a situation where you have refugees. Does that make sense? So they've started a war, mm -hmm. ruined the country. Mm -hmm. Now people want to flee the country. Then those people come to this country and take jobs that veterans of that war can't get yeah <laughs> think, think about that and you're yeah. exactly right the reason it's not just wages because because the obvious thing is people go well they can pay them less or whatever and that's you know true to some extent they can you know they're they're not as likely to you know rise to the ranks and you know want m more pay they need to work um, but the other big issue is control and there's also the issue that there's financial incentives there's a, a pamphlet that the local refugee center put out and they tell you I, I did a story on it it's really amazing it was a really easy story to write david i just did copy and paste from the brochure <laughs> and, and and the brochure was literally saying things like um you know if someone's from Af you know afghanistan be careful not to ask about their wife because they might seek revenge that was wow. the kind of thing they were saying in there <laughs> and they're telling employers, you know, don't look if a, if a person's from Eritrea, don't look them in the eye because they won't like that or don't, you know, all these things. And, and you'd think it would be easier just to say, hi, you're in America now. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. People, people are going to ask about your wife and look at you and some people won't look at you and some people won't ask about your wife and just chill. This is America. That's, that's life. Get used to it. But and instead, they have to tell the employers how to get used to it. And, 
you know, you mentioned the media here. The local newspaper, um, I got more interested in them when they did an editorial attacking Breitbart and me. As you may have noticed, Breitbart uh, has come under some attacks for some yeah. reason in the past couple of weeks. <laughs> exactly. Ever since Steve Bannon took over the uh, Trump campaign, he'll, you know, Hillary Clinton's talked about us, and she loves you guys as well. So <laughs> It's a badge of honor, isn't it? Family. It's a badge of honor, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. yeah. But um, but the, the local newspaper did an editorial that attacked me by name and attacked Breitbart. They said, well, I'm not a journalist, and I'm, you know, because <laughs> I'm an activist. And I don't see any contradiction between being a... I'm, 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 if they want to label me that way, great. I'm an activist who's done better journalism than the local paper. Let me put it that way. You know, I'm Steve, not a, I, uh, not a journalist. If they want to call me that, that's fine. You know, Lee, I, I think that we got to get rid of this idea that these the mainstream media is perfectly objective. That is their main tool of deception to say that they don't have an opinion. I would rather, and I have always gotten my news from people who are upfront about the fact that they have a point of view and that they have an opinion. If they don't understand what their bias is, then they're either ignorant or they're lying to you. Everybody has biases, even in the stories that you choose to support to report. Uh, that is an indication of what you're interested in, or what your bias is, or what your point of view is so no, i think that whole idea exactly right. yeah. I, can, I can watch rachel, rachel maddow mm -hmm. and i know where she comes from so i can use that filter or whatever and she does a lot of very factual she lays out facts a lot of the time and i can i can right. go okay well she's saying this uh you know alex is saying that or whatever and i can just compare and figure things out on my own and i think most people can what we learned about the local media is that they're owned by a company that was financed by Warren Buffett, head of Berkshire Hathaway, who's out on the stump for Hillary Clinton, right? We know that mm -hmm. Warren Buffett is out on the stump promoting Hillary Clinton. And the other thing that's very interesting around town is Berkshire Hathaway Realty is a major player here in town. You see them doing commercial real estate and local real estate. So this little economic boom that's been created by, by the globalist here Gee, Warren Buffett's kind of making some money off of that, you see? Yeah. And so the reason they're attacking me uh, and Breitbart and, and you guys and, and anybody else reporting on this is real simple. We're bad for business, right? That's what mm -hmm. it is. They're concerned that us raising these issues or the local activists raising these issues is bad for business. Now, it's bad for their business, maybe, right? Because you got to remember when the factory was put up, it's the world's largest yogurt factory here. It was put up with tens of millions of dollars, about $54 million in government incentives. So it wasn't like they just built it on their own. Exactly. This is like the Olympics where cities compete, right? They, they want the business. And so the city council here bent over backwards or... But possibly a better analogy is they bent over forwards. Yeah. Or <laughs> um, bent over the taxpayer forward. Exactly yeah. right. And, yeah. and again, you know, it's the kind of thing we see all the time where big businesses, and I don't care whether it's Walmart, which is very American, they get all these incentives. And I'll tell you what happens. One of the things, the, this, this story in Twin Falls, a lot of it is about unintended consequences. Um. So that, that girl got raped because they brought in refugees as cheap labor, which happened because they had economically wanted to get this yogurt factory here, and the guy who runs the yogurt factory is a major booster of the refugee program. And when I say booster, I mean working with the Clintons, working with Chuck Schumer, and working with Republicans like the Republican governor here, Butch Otter. Yes, and going to Davos and telling, uh, getting Davos, commitments. Yeah, yeah well, he's, he's set up a tent foundation yep. uh, to bring in refugees, saying they're the best. And that's what he was doing with Bill Clinton when they were talking about Detroit. They say, hey, we got all these empty homes. We can give them to the refugees. Well, and, and they're great employees. Later, today or tomorrow on Breitbart, that goes into more detail um, about some of this stuff. Hamdi Yulakai, who is not, let me, I just want to make this clear, he's not a U.S. citizen. That's okay, right. that's fine, but let's be clear. And yet he's on the New York uh, Fed board. I, how board does that happen? Fed, yeah. Which I'm sure that doesn't, anyone who listens to the InfoWars, that doesn't mean anything. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, and he's working with John Podesta's group, with the Center for American Progress, quoting, doing a report that quotes the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Again, that won't mean anything to listeners of InfoWars. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, but here's the thing. The people who listen to you guys, the people who listen to Breitbart, 
they know who the IMF, the people who read Breitbart, they know who the IMF is. They know what the Fed is and what that means. Mm-hmm. Most people are busy with their lives and kids and jobs, right? Yep. So they don't know. If I say, well, they did a report with Podesta and the IMF, they don't understand the implication of that. The implication is these guys all work together. This is a group of people, guys and gals, let's throw Hillary in there. Um, uh, they all work together, right? And they're all jetting off to Davos and doing Huffington Post editorials and, and everything else, working together. Meantime, like I say, you end up with this situation where I, I really, we really wanted to do in Twin Falls was look into the causation and then the ripple effect that this has had throughout the city and then show how that's worked in other places. Now, Hamdi Yulikaya, not a, not a U.S. citizen, in 2000, let me, let me back up one second. So he became friends with Chuck Schumer because he's got a, another factory in New York. That's where Chuck his first Schumer, factory was, yeah. Chuck Schumer urged him to uh, be part of the federal school lunch program. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid getting details on that right now because I don't want to be confusing. But So Chuck Schumer buddies up to Hamdi Yulikaya and vice versa because it's good for Hamdi's business and it's good for Chuck's political career now and, and for the constituents in New York. So what they do is in 2013 when Chuck Schumer was part of the Gang of Eight pushing for open borders, guess who becomes a special guest and visits with President Obama in the White House to promote comprehensive immigration reform. That would be Hamdi um, Yeah. So think about that. We have a non-U.S. citizen, which is, again, that's fine, but pushing for immigration reform in America when it's an issue that he clearly, he's, he's not a citizen, yeah. pushing for that. I, I would not expect to go to Australia and push for more immigration to Australia because I'm not Australian. Does it's just like- it's just mind boggling. Yeah, exactly. How how does he have the authority to go in and tell us that how many people we should bring into our country that aren't Americans? He's not even an American, and he's sitting on the Fed board where they're making economic policy. I mean, the and- the New York Fed is is the center of the Fed, the, and this guy is there, and he's a Turkish citizen. And we and we have a story coming at Breitbart. My my, my colleague Michael Patrick Lay, he's been great on this. Now think about this. We contacted. Chobani, and ask them a simple question. We're just confirming that he's a, is he a U.S. citizen or not? Forbes reported, and, and I linked to it, Forbes reported he's not a U.S. citizen. Their response, now you'd think that's an easy question, right? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> So I bet no they don't want any comment. Heard. Yeah, but he brags on his Tent Foundation that he is a member of the Federal Reserve Board of New York. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, he brags and about like that. I say, the, so what ha- here's what happens. The White House needs these dog and pony shows. You know, immigrants, businessmen, successful entrepreneurs also support comprehensive immigration reform. So he's out there. If you can look this up. It's on C-SPAN. He makes a statement. Steve Case from AOL makes a statement. These other guys. And they come out. So, the U- so what's in it for the government is the- their little puppets in the dog and pony show. Oh, look. Hamdi Yulikai is a successful immigrant. He's a successful entrepreneur. Now, what they don't tell you is that part of his success is that Chuck Schumer, two weeks ago, this again, conspiracy theory, right? He goes to the White House. He makes the statement. Two weeks later, the White House comes out and says, guess what? We'd like Greek yogurt, not any yogurt, Greek yogurt, which is what Chobani yogurt is. Yeah to become part of the federal school lunch program. And he basically owns the Greek yogurt segment. He's got more than 50%. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Lee Stranahan, Breitbart lead investigative reporter. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Lee Stranahan, lead investigative reporter at Breitbart News, founder of citizenjournalismschool.com. He is in Twin Falls, Idaho, looking at what's happening with the refugee situation there. And, of course, the... Billionaire who is an advocate for bringing in refugees, as just pointed out. Here's a guy who is uh, speaking at the U.N., uh, meeting with 
President Obama telling us that we need to bring in more and more refugees, as we saw this uh, article that was up yesterday on Breitbart. Bill Clinton uh, meeting with Hamdi Yulukaya, and he is saying, hey, let's uh, fill Detroit uh, with refugees. We've got 10,000 empty homes. Let's just bring these guys in. Uh, they're you know, better than the people who are already there, black and white. And it's interesting, if you look at the proposals that Hillary Clinton has, she's proposing to bring in more than the current population of Detroit. In terms of just refugees alone, we don't have any way to vet who these people are. We go into the country, we start a war, and then we bring in uh, the uh, angry people into this country without being able to vet them, saying they're refugees. There's other ways to help them. One of the ways might be to stop the war we started. Before we go back to Lee and uh, finish up, I want to tell you about a couple of specials that we have here at InfoWars. Of course, that's the way we support ourselves. It's the way that we keep ourselves uh, independent of the kind of levers that uh, they apply in terms of pressure to the mainstream media. We sell directly. We sell products that will help you, and that helps us to keep our operation going. Right now, we have a sale on vitamin mineral fusion drink mix. That's at InfoWarsLife.com, 20% off. That's one month's supply of essential vitamins and minerals in a very easy-to-swallow liquid format. And uh, also very tasty. Again, that's a vitamin mineral fusion drink. It has all the essential vitamins and minerals that you're going to need for supplementation in an easy-to-swallow, tasteful drink. Also, we have discounted the Hillary for Prison t-shirts as part of our Black Heart special. Uh, take this, Hillary. <laughs> We're going to give these things away at cost. You can get them at nine ninety five at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a great way to send the message that you know exactly where Hillary belongs, the big house, not the White House. Let's go back to uh, Lee Stranahan, who is in Twin Falls, Idaho. As you were talking about uh, how easy it was for him to get not only yogurt in Michelle's school lunch program, but specifically the kind of yogurt that he sells, that he has a market dominance in. And, of course, he did that with just eight months of lobbying, but with massive amounts of cash being spent in Washington. He started out his business with an $800,000 small business loan, and he put in $700,000 worth of lobbying through the Cornerstone government lobbying firm. And it got some pretty good results for him, didn't it, Lee? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been doing, it's over 700000 over years, over about yeah. six years now, when all this stuff started. And again, this, this can't be emphasized enough. You, you hit it. But Chuck Schumer, they're, see, here's the thing. They're not subtle. That's right. <laughs> about the puppet show. They're not subtle about it, mm -hmm. but they know that most people won't even do one layer of research down. Does that make sense? Yep. Just most people are just, again, I get it. People are busy and they can't research everything. So they see the guy come out at the White House and they go, okay, well, it seems like a business guy is in favor of this comprehensive immigration form. They don't read The Hill, which is an inside the Beltway publication. So they miss The Hill saying two weeks later, Oh, by the way, the White House wants to push for Greek yogurt being part of the school lunch program. They don't read the local Albany paper that um, says, we're, he, you know, Chuck Schumer is doing this, promoting this. Well, we're running out of time, Lee. Tell people uh, you're, you're going to be there for a while. You're doing a whole series of investigations on what's going on with the refugee situation in Idaho. The fact that they're replacing Americans from the worker all the way up to the CEO. You're going to be there for a while. You're with uh, Breitbart News. This is Lee Stranahan. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for the InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you so much, Lee. You're awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you.